Now I come to a sad story. This is Gary Hoover looking at big companies. Today I want to talk about Eastman Kodak. In the last few weeks they declared bankruptcy. I don't know, they'll probably survive and come back out of that, but it'll never be the Eastman Kodak that I grew up with. I was looking at this book, a great book, it's called Technology in America. Uh, the author's name is Purcell, P-U-R-S-E-L-L, -L, Technology in America, Carol Purcell. One of my favorite books uh, about technology and how technology companies are built, but it's the histories. It's the uh, Edisons and Kodaks of the world, and a great little short chapters by different authors, so I highly recommend the book. But anyway, so I'm reading here, George Eastman. Photography had really begun to ramp up in like the 1840s. It was very cool. People were using these plates and all that. There were a couple of different systems people used, but you had to have a dark room. So, or when you took the picture, you know, your head and the camera were under a big black sheet. And then when you went to make your chemicals and process the thing afterwards, you had to be in a dark room. It was very clumsy. And old George Eastman said, there's got to be a better way. So he came up with the idea of roll film. You know, put the film, uh, create that, that surface, the silver stuff on paper and run it around through the, through the camera. Oh, it would be so much easier. Well, the people taking photographs for newspapers and portraits of people, they had their studios, they had their darkroom. Why adopt a new technology? They liked the way it worked. They thought they were getting better pictures that way. And so he failed, you know, 1885, 1884 through 1887, trying and trying. And, and later his company figured out how to put film on a sprocket so they could make movies. So that was a key breakthrough. We wouldn't have movies today without George Eastman, Rochester, New York. He finally, by 1887 or so, said, here's a quote, I have come to think of the, that the maintenance, oh, oh, step back one, sorry. When we started out with our scheme of film photography, we expected that everybody that used glass plates would take up films. So he wanted those professional photographers. But we found that the number that did this was relatively small and that in order to make a large business, we would have to reach the general public and create a new class of patrons. So he just said, look, I got a cool thing and nobody in this business wants it. I got to go create. Peter Drucker said the sole purpose of a business is to create customers. Here's George Eastman saying the same thing. And he went out and by the mid 1890s, he, uh, individual consumer amateur photography was huge. And what he did is he put the film in a camera, shipped you a camera, it could take 100 pictures. When it was done, you shipped the whole camera back to the factory. They would take out the film, develop it, put new film in it, and add your 100 pictures and send them back to you. And, and, that, and he came up with the name Kodak just because he thought he, it sounded good and it would people would remember it. And I got to tell you, of all the great trade names in American history, those, those hard Ks on the ends and the D in the middle and just being uh, five letters uh, and with the consonants and the vowels arranged the way they are, powerful, powerful word. Uh, usually I'm not that big on invented names and invented words, but boy, he got it right. And anyhow, then here, this is a couple years later, he's saying, He's built up the company, he's really shipping all these cameras and, and film, uh, and he, he says, I have come to think that the maintenance of a lead in the apparatus trade, selling cameras, will depend greatly upon a rapid succession of changes and improvements. With that aim and view, I propose to organize the experimental department in the camera works and to raise it to a high degree of efficiency. If we can get out improved goods every year, Nobody will be able to get our original goods the same as we do. Get out original goods the same as we do. In other words, he said, annual model change. Now, people say, well, that was the auto industry, General Motors. No, here he is in the 1880s, 1890s, saying, got to come out with a new one every year. Got to make it better every year. The idea of continuous improvement, that is such a powerful idea. And that's how great companies work. They make it better and better every day so that that guy that's uh, uh, 10 feet behind you, your competitor chasing you today, he's going to be 50 feet or she's going to be 100 feet behind you next year. I've seen so many companies say, oh, we're going to catch the leader. We're going to do this, this, and this, which is a list of what the leader did. Time they get it done, the leader's like cross the ocean and move to a whole other planet, whatever metaphor you want to use. Here is George Eastman laying this all out. He then went on, it's funny, in 1911, he's over being feeded at a dinner, a big banquet at Bayer or Bayer, the big German chemical company. They said, oh, Mr. Mr. Eastman, uh, and, you know, gave a speech, whatever. And, and, uh, and the guy sitting next to him ran the Bayer research labs and said, well, uh, how did you like our labs? What are yours like? And Kodak embarrassingly said, we don't have one. Went back 1912, they started one of the first big industrial research centers. People just thinking about the future and experimenting with things in 
an even higher level. And, and when uh, GE and General Motors and all those people did that, a lot of them got a lot of ideas from Kodak. This went on to become one of the greatest American companies. It was always a great place to work. It was one of the ones where they didn't have a big issue with unions because people loved working there. I just made another post about great places to work. Um, and the other thing is I believe monopolies only exist when the government gives them the right to be a monopoly. That in the open, fair, free marketplace with very, very, very few exceptions, you can't maintain a monopoly except by having great products. Well, and a monopoly would mean you have 100% of the market. Well, Kodak, as I was growing up, I think ran most of the time, sold about 70% of all the films sold in the United States. I think that was their U.S. share. And, and a really, really high number around the world. I don't know if it was quite 70. Their only real competitor was a company called Fuji, a great Japanese company. But... And yet Kodak did that without any government protection other than their own patents. But Fuji made great film too. I used a lot of their slide film back in the old slide days. Um, that idea of being the best and making it better every day is so critical. And that's what allowed Kodak to be such a great place to work and to have such incredible market share. It wasn't anybody saying, oh, you get the market share or, or them cheating or anything. I never saw anybody accuse them of cheating. It's very sad. The company's gone downhill. I give talks. I've, I've been interviewed on NPR about the future of Kodak years ago. Um, and sometimes you look at it and say, well, they should have mastered digital cameras and they let the other guys, uh, uh, Canon and Sony and the boys, take away. That is true, but at the same time, if you really study the, the company, in a lot of ways it was a chemical company because that's what they were working with, silver chemistry and all that. And so to the extent that's true, maybe it was asking too much for a chemical company to morph into a, 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 an electronics a, a company. I don't know. No matter how you cut it, under the right leadership, they could have morphed and changed. But let's face it, for all the press about companies reinventing themselves, it very rarely happens. It very rarely happens to truly, deeply reinvent themselves. I can name a few cases, mainly in retailing. It very rarely happens. It's very sad. Eastman Kodak was a great company. It gave uh, Rochester huge amounts of money and for that wonderful university there and the uh, Eastman Center and preservation of film. Um, it's sad to see it go downhill, but it doesn't mean we can't learn a lot from George Eastman. Doesn't mean we can't learn a lot from Thomas Edison. So study your history. See how they did it, because these guys were no dummies. They're among the greatest entrepreneurs the world has ever seen. I'm Gary Hoover. That's it for right now. Talk to you later.